So welcome to my third video of reviewing collectibles. Once again, putting this up as a um, side note, I do not make toy review videos professionally or anything like that. I just do them um, for my own channel and my own kind of things. I am a Let's Player by trade for these kind of videos, so I am not a professional collectible reviewer. These are just things that I notice myself and therefore post for my audience to also uh, see and point out. So if you find me while looking up toy reviews, also check out my other channel or my other videos on my channel. But anyways, we're, we're gonna go even further into our collectible reviews. So the a couple of weeks ago, actually probably a month ago, I bought my first Amiibo. I do not own a Wii U or a 3DS and it was the Shovel Knight Amiibo because I like Shovel Knight and I wanted to have a nice collectible Shovel Knight figurine. And when I bought it, I was very impressed with Nintendo's quality and attention to detail for a very reasonable price. Uh, Shovel Knight was $13 with the box and everything, and the Amiibos are really good. I've never bought an Amiibo before until that point, and that was like, man, I was looking at, um, when I did buy Shovel Knight from Best Buy, I was looking at the, the Splatoons, and I, I've never played Splatoon either, but I like the design. So basically, I'm collecting them on an aesthetic value more so than actually having um, brand attachment sometimes. With Shovel Knight, it was brand attachment because I do own the Steam version of the game, but I really liked the design for uh, the Splatoon characters, the squids and the squid girls and the squid guys, but I like the squid girl the most. So I bought me my second amiibo without owning a Wii U, and I am incredibly impressed with the detail. Now, I've already said this before, I am not going to be taking these ones out of the box. If I ever find a Shovel Knight or um, a Splatoon Girl out of the box and at a reasonable price, I'd buy them. <laughs> then I can have one out of the box and all that, but, like, I feel really bad. The packaging is so nice, but unfortunately, it's the kind where if you do open it, you just completely, um... Uh, destroy the cardboard and everything behind it. So these guys are just for for showing off and the level of quality that you get for these being at um, Around 10 to 13 dollars some amiibos are more expensive than others some less like um, I also like the the yarn Yoshi's a lot, but those are about 15 to 17 dollars right now uh, Splatoon Girl and Shovel Knight were like 13 and some of the smaller Amiibos are also around like the $10 range, but they're all around like 10 to $15. Like that's a good uh, medium. So, you're a kid, you're a squid, you're a kid, you're a squid. So, I absolutely love the the detail that you get for this. They, Nintendo, whatever you want to say about Nintendo, at least they give their fans something that is... That can also be functional and extremely uh, well made at a cheap price. So it's I, I'm gonna list the amiibos at like the height of what you would want out of a um, out of a franchise merchandise. So it's functional, it's well made, and it's fantastic. And it is addictive as hell once you start collecting them. Now, so, if Amiibo is my top tier of collectibles, I would say the Funko Pops are probably second tier. So, at, when I was at the mall a couple of other weeks ago, I was looking into um, the Funko Pops for um, the TV shows, like uh, Adventure Time and stuff like that. Um, now, with me with the Funko Pops is a lot of characters tend to not actually work with the, the big head, big eyed... Um, uh, design aesthetic like Walking Dead characters, serious characters, zombies. I I don't I don't really like the looks of them. However, with Adventure Time, I think Adventure Time works very well. So I was actually looking for a Bemo, but instead I got the Marceline with the hat and guitar, and she is very very well made. Her paint job is fantastic. Actually, when I first opened her out of the box, which I'll get into more about that with the boxing, is she had like white chalky stuff all over her hair and I don't know why but it wiped right off so that was that was very weird but she's completely vinyl um detailed she sits up uh, the hair props up with her feet as well she's balanced she doesn't fall over and I think the Adventure Time characters for the most part do uh fit the aesthetic of the Funkos really well the Lich which is a character from Adventure Time, I do not think makes a very good um, Funko Pop. Kind of defeats the whole purpose of the character. Like, if you're making... Um, there's being tongue-in-cheek, and then there's making everything 
in a um, assembly line kind of ideal with different changes to them. Like, for example, with my cat series, like, a lot of characters work in those costumes as cats, but there's a lot of things that I would never draw those cats as because it wouldn't really fit or be uh, distinguishable right off the bat. Like, a lot of the characters, like, uh, like I was looking at one of the boxes and it was just a... Uh, uh, a white male character with brown spiky hair, I'm like, that could be, like, 500 different characters without looking at the box. Like, if you put that without the box and just put it on the thing, it's like, it, this is generic, like, male Mary Sue number one, you know, kind of thing. But I am very, very happy with the Marceline. Still want to get the Bimo. I think Bimo works really well. I almost got the Fire Princess, but Marceline playing the guitar... I highly recommend for those who uh, also want. I almost bought the, the Big Daddy from Bioshock because I love Bioshock and the Big Daddy actually kind of works like that. Like, that's good caricature without taking away from the feel of the character, you know? There's a difference between completely rebranding something and then staying true to how it feels as a caricature. Your caricature can be as simple or as as complex as you want, but it's just, it should still feel like the the thing that you're purchasing to begin with so and, but the problem with with funko is unlike with the amiibos which are actually you can pick them up fucking anywhere they're all over the place you can do the same thing with funko but they do have limited series and i know some amiibos do as well but like um you can basically get any funko off of um off of amazon but when you go into physical stores they basically have like 20 of the same character or um, not even, like, anything really to choose from. Like, FYE, so far, what I've dealt with has the best, um, uh, variety of Funkos you can choose from. Hot Topic and GameStop are also pretty good, but I actually went to Toys R Us for the first time in, like, 15 years the other day looking for Funkos, because I really wanted the Beam, I wanted to see if they had them. And it was, like, a huge Toys R Us, too. Like, imagine a Walmart, but it was just all, you know, Toys R Us. And... A nice thing about the Toys R Us was they were having an Amiibo sale where it was 50% off of all Amiibos, but I didn't want to buy any more. I just, two is enough. Two is enough, and I got the ones that I wanted. So if you guys are interested in Amiibos right now, maybe go check out your Toys R Us and uh, see what they're offering for deals right now, because the one I had, it was 50% off of all Amiibos. I was tempted to get the Yarn Yoshis, don't get me wrong, but I kind of wanted to get the Yarn Yoshis outside the box, like pre-owned yarn Yoshis because I still feel so bad about ruining the packaging but their Funko display was a one shelf thing and they had nothing it was just it was just crazy but yeah Toys R Us had very very limited um Funkos and it, it that kind of made me sad so your best bet is just buy it right off of Amazon because it's gonna be the about the same price this was about I think uh 11 to 12 dollars and to give you uh comparison of the size. Here's Marceline. Here's um, the Amiibo. So you're getting you're getting accurate brand quality and this is uh, basically um, character brand quality. And it's still, I would say they're both worth value because even though this is just a collectible to display on your thing, this can be used in-game if you actually want uh, an in-game uh, unlockable with your Nintendo. So that serves a function so that I feel, um, absolutely, um, uh, what's it, uh, validates its price. This validates its price because it's a big honking statue that is, um, well made. And let me say, the Funko, uh, packaging, I was extremely happy with because all it is, it's just a box, you open it, and it's a, it's a tag box, so you can just close it right back down if you want, and it's just uh, one piece of plastic holding it up, so there's no breaking, no damaging the box while you're opening it, and it's just, I, that made me real happy. Now, this is where we come back full circle to my other two merchandise reviews, which is the TF2 blind box minis. Now, I've made it clear in the past that I do love me some TF2. I love me some TF2 merchandise, but man, Volvo. We need to have a talk. And I picked the Pyro to show off because I think the Pyro is the best out of the first series design. The Pyro is very, very... Also, uh, a side note, my my webcam is flipped right now, so everything you're seeing right now is reversed. If you didn't notice from the Amiibo packaging, you're like, what? It's written backwards. So I think the, the, the Pyro probably is the one character that highlights the price value of the TF2 mini box. Because the problem with the TF2 blind box mini is 
the blind boxes. Still not happy about that. Notice how I was willing to give money to things that I could identify right off the bat and pick what I want. So, it has gimmicks attached to it. It has... It has limited accessibility, which is a problem I have with Valve. Is like, Valve makes fantastic things, and I do enjoy the quality of these, um, of their, uh, merchandise. Well, they don't actually, it's very well made for what it is, and for the detail, and it is good caricature, uh, cartooniness. Like, if you look at the Scout, Spy, or Soldier that I have right now, like, those are, they look like TF2 right off the bat without being so, um, um, manipulated that they could basically look like anything, you know? Just with, uh, their clothes on, you know, with their signature clothes. These do look like the characters from in-game even more broken down. But, this costs the same amount as the Amiibo and the Funko with shipping included. Because the problem with the TF2 blind boxes is they hardly sell in main real, uh, retailers like Walmart, Target, uh, FYE, Hot Topic, every single store I've ever gone to, ha de I went to GameStop asking about these, and they're like, the guy at the counter is like, I didn't even know these were a thing, I'm like, they've been out for like almost two years now, so it's very much an inside, like you're a part of the clique or you're not, and I think Valve has a problem about letting everyone in, you know, being very inclusive, because I see no reason why you couldn't have these in stores to pick up for $10 and then not have to worry about the $5 shipping cost for one box. That's the thing. This is about the same size as the Amiibo. So here's that, and here's the Amiibo. I could see this being validated as $10 plus $5 shipping and handling if it came with an in-game code, just like how the Amiibo has a functioning um, use when playing games. However, this does not come with an in-game code. Even the, um, I've talked about the, the, what is it? The larger action figures that look like, um, the actual scale to, um, uh, the game, uh, designs. The, like, I have the, the Demo Man. What, what company makes those again? Uh, shit, I'm following them too. Anyways, the realistic looking action figures, those do come with codes in-game. They're not the best codes, they give you a, a genuine kind of hat sort of deal, but they're still not worth that much. But it's still a nice gesture. Even the soundtrack for Portal came with the Wheatley, um, or, uh, is it Wheatley? The, the, the Portal Sapper, which I do have for the Spy. This, it's just so niche without really paying back. Like, I would, I would, I would describe the the blind boxes being the same thing as the in-game cases which i have problems with too because it's not as bad as a uh be, okay so in game when you're playing tf2 you get box drops or or um case drops and you can open them for either hats weapons or unusuals unusual weapons you know shit like that but it's much easier to trade for something that's a good idea valve amiibos and give you hats exactly uh but since it's virtual, you can ch exchange it and trade it with anyone that you want for something you do want or sell it right there. With the blind box minis, it's the same raffle kind of ideology where, oh, you could get anything that you want or any item in imaginable and stuff like that. But say you get, like, say you unbox three scouts in a row, all three red scouts. Like, what are you going to do with that? You got to then go to eBay or Amazon or something like that because there's no easy way to trade them for something that you would want. And I would imagine that there is a decent amount of people out there who would love a community to get in touch with other people to trade their duplicates. However, since barely uh, anyone even knows about these things existing, it's just such bullshit. You either sell them back to, like, niche comic book stores for, like, like three bucks or something like that, and it's just... It's just so inexclusive. It's just... Ugh. And they're well-made, and I love collecting them, but... It's like, Valve, you need to get your shit together with your merchandising, and, like, oh, It's like, why does it have to be, like, a gamble every time? Why can't you be secured in knowing 
that you have something that you want, that you're paying money for that you want, and you're willing to pay money for that you want. I know people get thrills out of unboxing these things because it's just like, you know, it's gambling, lotto tickets, scratch-offs, it's, it's boom, here. And NECA. The NECA TF2 uh, action figures, I think, are really nice. Not the best paint jobs in the world. I wish they had more detail. That's all I'm going to say about that for right now. Because they are decent, articulated action figures, but the, the painting could be a lot better. But, I mean, look at... Look at the value that you get from this. Everyone can get a Funko... And they can just buy the Funko that they want. No one forced me to, like, close my eyes and point at a random number and then say, oh, you might get a Marceline. No, I got a Marceline. That's what I wanted. I didn't want the Lich. I didn't want Fire Princess. I got Marceline. This, this was just a 1 in, like, 15 chance of getting, and then it happened. So, it's just... Because... <laughs> Everyone has the Walking Dead blind boxes, Minecraft blind boxes, My Little Pony blind boxes, but the thing is, they're much more large communities. Like, they cover, they cover millions of people. TF2 covers maybe a million, probably a couple hundred thousand at most. And probably even, like, 10% of that number even tries to look for these things, you know? The, the people who actually do, because they're the only ones who know that these are out, because they don't even advertise them when they come out and just draw some fucking nerds. It's like, Valve, please, we want to give you money for the things that we want. You don't have to make everything a fucking hassle to get. Like, it's just, ugh, it drives me nuts. But anyways, the TF2, I would recommend buying. But if you've never actually gotten uh, a blind box before, there is, you can go here. I'm going to link it right now. It's called welovefine.com. W E F or no W E L O V E F I N E dot com, which is the now I guess official um TF two store because a while ago TF two stopped even hosting uh their own like the vast majority of merchandise on the Valve store, which I thought was weird. It's like where'd all this shit go? Like the spy crabs, um the the scarves, the the you know, all their their normally uh, listed stuff is there. Usually now it's just like their posters and prints. So it took me a while to find out that they actually just put everything back onto We Love Fine, which is the site that they made an agreement with to host their um, uh, their products when they first released their uh, merchandise line through Steam. Like say if I, and I've done this before, say I made a, a TF2 related design that I would like to be printed on a shirt, which I have before, and then I upload it to the marketplace, not the marketplace, the, um, uh, the workshop. Actually, let me sh oh, I can't show it to you right now, I'm on webcam. So you go to the workshop, you go to TF2, and then you go to, uh, their market. And then if it gets enough votes and it's approved by Valve, it is then sold on We Love Fine. So I recommend you guys checking out We Love Fine for, um, TF2 merchandise, or even Valve, they got a lot of Dota, Counter-Strike, Portal, Half-Life, all that is on We Love Fine along with Adventure Time, um, My Little Pony, other, you know, um, genres and stuff like that. And it's like, what? they don't advertise it at all. It's like, it's like they just want everything to be a giant secret because Valve has always worked in the shadows. That's the thing. But it's so odd when there's still a multi if not million or a billion million dollar company, I would imagine billions at this point, considering Steam, but they just don't advertise merch, and yet their entire thing is revolved around virtual items to be traded for goods. It's just it makes no sense that they just hide their physical merchandise like they do, and it's just ugh. But anyways, on that site, if you have never gotten one of the TF2 mini blind boxes, and you're very interested in the collection, you can buy, if you buy 12, and they're all $10 a piece, if you buy 12, so at least $120 you have to invest into this, you can get the display case and everything, and your odds of getting the rare ones, including the Pyro Land, uh, Pyro, Invisible Spy, and Golden, uh, Re uh, Golden NG, along with either the sentries, will increase. Now that makes me very sad to say, because I... I would be tempted to actually invest in that to um, 
unlock them to uh, see what other ones I can get, but I would much rather just buy the ones that I want. Like, I, the only other one that I want, I don't have an engineer, could use an engineer, uh, would probably be the Powerland Pyro, which is going for like $40 right now, which is way too fucking high. But when Series 2 comes out, and they have uh, talked about Series 2, there is a uh, work in progress of the payload cart, which I really want, and the medic, all um, wax figures, not too much detail, but they are being made. And I don't know when they're going to come out, but when that does come out, I have a feeling We Love Fine is going to do the same thing where you buy 12 and you get the box. I'm probably going to do that. Whenever the fuck that happens, I'm probably going to do that. But it's like when I do get duplicates, because I am going to get duplicates from that, it's like, what am I going to do with them? <laughs> you know, I, I just just go to eBay, Amazon, that kind of stuff. It's just such a pain in the ass. Whereas... If they just let me have the option to buy what I want, I could just buy what I want. So let's let's wrap this up. We talked about customer value. So I Amiibos, top tiers. Funko, mid tiers. And then I would have to unfortunately say, as much as I love the the TF2 blind box minis, and they are well made, they are low tiers. I mean, for something this size and this quality, for $10, you imagine to get, like, a Happy Meal with it, you know? It's it's ridiculous. Oh, I got a fuzzy in my hair. Fuzzy. Get, get out of here. Get, be gone. Banish you. But, yeah, it's, it really is like a glorified McDonald's toy, and people are willing to pay the price, but not not very often. Like, the ones that I got, I'm very happy with, and I enjoy them, but... The fact that you can't pick them up in store, like, I never would have bought this Amiibo or that Marceline if I had to deal with, um, with, uh, shipping and handling fees. Just want it. I went to a store, I picked them up off the shelf, and I bought them. I picked up an item that, for a game that I've never even played, and for a console I don't even own, and it has no significant use to me, but I liked it. And therefore, I was compulsive enough to buy it. It was like, that, that's the thing. That's what consumerism is about. You let the consumer pick what they want, and you just keep going with it. With Marceline, I probably wouldn't have bought it if it wasn't there, because I was looking for BMO. BMO, I probably will pay shipping and handling, because I want a BMO figurine. But there was no BMO. There was just Marceline. So I bought me a Marceline, you know? It's just, ugh. But here... You're either given the choice of getting what you want, a 1 in 15 chance of getting what you want, or you just get something that you probably don't want to begin with. Which I just, I hate that kind of, I just, I just hate that kind of uh, mentality for that. It just, it just pisses me off so much. But yeah, so I'm hoping that, um, that Series 2 will come out soon, when I have money. <laughs> and, um... That Valve really considers their their customer basis. Like, a I'm gonna I'm just gonna say this right off the bat: the majority of people who make TF2 fan art, really good TF2 fan art, are women. The majority of items sold in the shops are clothes for men. There's very few women options. Now I'm not saying it should be mostly women. I'm saying it should be a 50/50 spread. Like there should be tank tops, there should be women fitted clothes. They have some hoodies which are really nice, but the majority is just, you know, focused at men. And it's like can we all have something nice to pick from? It'd be great. I just want I just want to put that out there. I would like I would wear a TF2 tank top all the time if given the option. But I don't have the option because they don't give you the options. And it's like they just keep trying to make their circle smaller and smaller and smaller until there's only going to be like a handful of people in there. And I don't, I don't get it. When you make your game free to play and then people start playing your game and they start loving your game and they start wanting to give you more money because they love the game and they want to support you, then that's when you close the door? Makes, makes no sense. So Valve, you need to let more artists in, you need to start catering to more people who want to give you money, and you just need to stop with the gimmicks. There's no reason to do the gimmicks. You're a major company, a major name. You're as big as Nintendo at this point. Like, you just need to start thinking about Amiibos, which is your competition, 
I mean, kind of. I mean, these they probably do see these um, these minifigures as one shot kind of things, which is sad. That they could be so much more. They could be more involved in the community and the game themselves. Like say say the pyro had a specific code, just like how the squid girl has a specific code, and you could only get it from the red pyro and all that. And say you still want to do the blind box thing. Well, then more communities could get together and say, I have a red pyro, but I would like a blue spy because I want the blue spy uh, code attached to it. And it's not a one-time deal. It's just if you have the figure. Oh. Makes me so sad that I have to uh, give them a negative review for something that I do like. I mean, it's not really a negative review. It's just something that I can't, you know, say, just go out and splurge on. Because now you just have a mountain of plastic, overpriced plastic, that has no function other than just looking good. And it's like, would you rather have a trophy wife that does fucking nothing, or would you rather have a trophy wife who can, like, karate chop a wall in half? I'm going for the karate chopping trophy wife. And I think I've spent enough time on this. I'm going to go back to my uh, what I was doing before I started this on my stream. But that's all I wanted to, s to cover, is for consumer value... Look into what you want to buy, see if it meets your qualities, but don't just automatically buy something and overpay for it, you know? Just, just, just keep that in mind. Very nice quality items we just looked at, but Pyro, it's a good thing you're adorable. Look at you. He's so freaking cute. Look at him in HD. Focus camera. Focus. There we go. Yeah. Ah, oh, I want a payload cart. I want it real bad. So that's all I'm going to say for this. Once again, not a professional toy reviewer or any of that shit making these videos for my audience. And I do hope that you are also a part of my audience now, if you weren't already. So until next time, I will be uh, covering the TF2 um, Series 2 for the blind boxes. But we'll see how that goes. But until next time, go buy some Amiibos, go buy some Funko Pops, and... If you can, buy one of these for like five bucks.